Reclaimed Adventures if you're looking for that too. We are the same channel, same family, same everything. You can also find a link to the actual Reclaimed Adventures page, but we're gonna be one and the same pretty soon. Today I am working on a project for the Petite Gems. It is something I have in my shop, on my Etsy shop. I'll leave the link below for that also. Um, it is a heat transfer vinyl project. It is a Harry Potter onesie, super, super, super cute. I use my Silhouette Cameo 3, and I have the business edition for the studio design. Um, I have used this particular file, the Harry Potter file, on just the simple free download for the studio. I'm gonna turn the camera around so we can look at my laptop. This is where I do everything. If you can't tell, I like Harry Potter. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get those started and see what we can do. It is a really, really simple process. I think sometimes the computer work is the hardest part of all of it. Um, and you, you know, sizing is a little bit tricky on the tiny onesies because they're little babies. Um, and I actually don't have a heat press. I've managed to run this business for a couple of years with no complaints of me using my handy dandy trusty iron from home that cost about $10 at the store down the street. You don't need something fancy if you have a little elbow grease, okay? And you know what you're doing. And I've watched so many YouTube videos on how long and hard I have to press, so I think I got it down. But if anybody has any tips, be sure to let me know. All right, we're gonna turn things around and get started. Okay, so I've turned things around and opened up my Silhouette Studio Business Edition, but whatever you have will work. I got this file off from Etsy. I can't remember the shop, but if you search You Are So Loved, Harry Potter, SVG, you'll find a million options. So, you have choices. All right, so go to your, uh, once you have it all downloaded, which I promise that is always a hassle for me and I can never remember exactly how to do it. So, don't ask me. Go to your library and find your file. I actually have two copies of them. This is the one that I use. I just happen to know that and I will double click. And it takes a minute to open. Oh, that was super, super not bad at all. Okay, now what I'm going to do is work on, before I resize anything, I like to flip it. You always want to flip horizontally when you're doing heat transfer vinyl. You want it to be backwards because when you flip it to iron it on, that's the way it's going to be. So I flip it first because I feel like when I'm resizing it, and if I were to resize it the other way, maybe it wouldn't work right. I don't know. And it, it's just maybe I'm neurotic, but I like to um, set my phone, set it up that way. All right, I'm doing a fairly small onesie. So I'm going to resize this to a fairly small. I'm thinking I'm going about four and a half inches either side. I kind of like the width, so we're just gonna go up a little bit. Perfect. They don't need to be equal um, for this one in particular. I'm gonna, oops, excuse me. I'm gonna make it a little tiny bit wider. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna make it a little tiny bit wider. But not much. All right. Now I have this lined up. This mat on here is the replica of the mat that we use. I don't have any sticky left on a single one of my mats. I have about five mats and none of them are sticky so I use scotch tape very on the very edges I use scotch tape and I'll show you how I do my little hack there so I like to get this as close to the edge as I can because I don't like to waste vinyl or space vinyl is so expensive as you guys know all right so my edge is about right I think I might bring it down just a hair I don't like how close that is and you can always set up in your page setup your grid marks, your page marks, your print line, things like that. I don't actually have it, um, but there's your print border. It is just barely visible, but right there. So we're right on the line, basically. That hat was pretty close, but I'm gonna move it up back to where it was because I think we're good. I like the way that looks. That is all I need to print for right now. So I'm gonna go over to send up in our right-hand corner. I don't actually have my machine plugged in, so hold on one second. Do, 
do. Make sure you're plugged into your silhouette and that your silhouette is on. And we are going to move to that section soon, but here we go. There, go to send once you're plugged in. Be a little bit more prepared than me. Everything looks good so far. Just letting things set up a bit. All right, now I'm going to click on my image just so it's highlighted. And I'm going over here to cut. You have no cut, you have cut and cut edge. Now cut edge will only do the edge and we don't want that. We need all the little nooks and crannies done. We do the middle cut and hopefully everything shows up red for you. Perfect, that is what we want. Now to your adjustments. I want to make sure that my material is on heat transfer smooth. Right, I am there. Um, speed is good. We don't need it to go crazy fast, um, but force is never gonna work it for. So I put this at about 13. All right, perfect. Now I'm going to get the camera set up in a different way again, and I'm gonna get my vinyl ready and show you guys how I do that. We'll come back to this just to show the final step, but but this, like I said, was a very simple process so far. So let me get my vinyl and we will uh, go from there. Okay, so I have my heat transfer vinyl here. I'm using a gray. You can use whatever color you want. Um, it's important to remember, always remember, I had to put a little note on my machine to remember this for a while. When you put it on your mat, make sure that it is shiny side down. Shiny side down. Very important. When you're doing heat transfer vinyl, that is. The other vinyl, you don't do it that way, but we're not doing it that way today. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to the size that I need. I'm going to do about five inches um, all the way around, I've decided. And you guys probably can't see my lines, but you can believe I'm doing five. And this is six, but I really, really don't like to waste, so I'm gonna throw that in my scrap box because who knows when I might screw something up and need that again, so I'm just gonna put that other piece over there. And I'm gonna take my mat. Now, like I said earlier, all of my sticky is gone. It's gross and gone, super gross on this side, but all of your mats, and you can get replacement mats on Amazon, by the way, which are um, just as good. So now my numbers are backwards because I flipped this thing over, but pretend that it's the other way around. Um, shiny side down, like I said, find your arrow, put it in the corner, remember where you have it on your silhouette design on okay. your computer. Shiny side down and put this up in my corner where I know that it's gonna line up with my design studio on my computer. Excuse all my little gross things. I lost the little paper that goes over this pretty early in the game. I have a lot of these extra mats, but they've all lost their sticky. So I use pieces of tape all the way around because you don't want it flipping up on you, but use as, get as little on the vinyl as you can because this, like I talked about earlier, this project goes basically to all the edges because I don't like to waste. So make sure that you've got a tape that's going to stay down. Because when these come up on you, you're going to have a mess in your machine. And vinyl is expensive. You don't want to waste Once vinyl. you have it taped down, good, good, good. And you feel pretty confident about your stick job. We are going to put this into our machine. So I'm going to bring this down to my machine. Okay, so I'm going to do my load and unload. Make sure that you flip your thing that way so your things go up. And these move back and forth. I like to have these wheels where my material is or else, I don't know, I've had a lot of issues where my stuff just doesn't stay on. So press your load button. <laughs> One thing I do wish is that this was a little bit more quiet, but once you're loaded, flip that back up so it's locked down in the position. And now that we are there, we are gonna go ahead and get our program back running and set it up. So we will flip around again. All right, now that you've got your vinyl into your machine, let's go ahead and just press send. It is pretty much as simple as that. Now it's gonna ask you if you wanna send it mirrored or as is. Mirrored just means where you flipped it horizontally. We've already done that, so we're gonna send it as is. And now, if we're lucky, we should start cutting. It's so loud. Look, one of my tape pieces already come out, but once it's down there, it's not as big of a deal. But... I am gonna keep my hands on it. Try on it. Sometimes when I walk away, I come back. 
back and think they're a disaster. It's a machine, a machine sometimes breaks. <laughs> automatic replacement blade system from Amazon, so I get these black ones, but it's the same as the auto blade, um, and it sets up the same way. Let's just see what we're doing. Okay, it took a little while, so I stopped recording it, and Evan was screaming for me to plug his iPad in, so this is what we've come up with. Shiny side, flat side, and now we are going to weed it, so <laughs> when you use the tape like I have, sometimes it just pulls it right off for you, but not so lucky that time. So I actually... So take your pieces of tape off there. All right. I use, because I also sew as much as I do, I just use pins to weed. And you just take a corner and you pull it up like that. And you separate. Carefully peel them apart. Sometimes your cut wasn't as good as you hoped it was. And with this one in particular, sometimes like um, his wand, Harry's wand comes off. Looks like it's staying on that time though. So, you just peel. But you get the idea. You take your pen and you go to the areas that need pieces taken out. Ah! And you pull it out. Try not to poke through like I did, but it's no big deal. If you do. Oh goodness, sometimes I am a little bit of a train wreck. Okay, so here we are. I have finished weeding it. Along the way it's picked up 8,000 little sticky things, but hopefully those don't get ironed in. Now I like to measure, it's hard, these onesies get crooked on the bottoms here and it's so hard to judge where the center is. I don't actually do the center with this one, but I take this right here if you're lucky enough to have one lucky I mean it's not like I won the lottery and went out and bought this but you know what I mean um, but it's a see-through ruler and it's very helpful so I've already basically checked this like five times to make sure it's where I want it Dobby's hand and Hedwig's duh, either beak or wing I'm not sure are my two most outer parts and I want those to be equal to the arm so it doesn't really matter other than I want to put this at Dobby's hand and let's see, Hedwig's right about there. So I'm gonna count, that's one inch. That's a little over one and a half. And we've got a little over one and a half and about one inch, so they're super close. You could get neurotic about it, I tend to do things like that, but it looks crooked to you guys, I promise it is not. So, this is where we want it. I've had my iron on forever. You want this thing screaming, screaming hot. No water in it though. You don't want any moisture. Do not want moisture, I repeat. I can, you can use parchment paper. I use the sheet, it came with something one time and I just use it, but you want to cover this. You never want to just put your iron right on it. It's going to melt. It's going to be messy. It's just going to be You're going to want to press and press as hard as you can in several spots over your design. Mom! You're going to want to press for about 20 seconds each time. You hopeful. I don't know what he just said to me, but it was a, his face made me think that he might have threatened me. <laughs> Evan is four and he's extremely speech delayed. We are pretty good at understanding him, but um, a lot of other people aren't quite sure. He was born at 30 weeks, and he had meningitis in the NICU, and things have always been a little bit tougher for him. Man, he is like a kick. Okay, so I did the top part. I'm going down because I know my design goes down. Um, use really as much weight as you think your table's going to hold. Sometimes I actually stand up on the table and just push, push to push. Um, maybe don't do that, but... You, do, you use your best judgment. And I do sometimes go back over and just iron again. You want this thing to stick. And I just talk and talk and talk and I don't count, but man, that felt like 20 seconds. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just gonna kinda smoosh it all down. Nice. And you 
should be able to peel it right off. And that's just a little piece of string that I'm gonna pick off. There's little things to pick off that are not part of the design, but are part of little pieces of lint that just kind of get picked up along the way, like glitter, just like there. Okay, so that looks really, really good. So we're gonna take it, and I'm going to go ahead, make sure my sheet is clear of anything. Yeek. Sorry, and I'm gonna do that one more time. Just over it a few times. Just truly really try to seal that in there, you know? And if you have yourself a heat press, then just ignore this whole step and just be like, lady, I got this. But I'm thinking if you're watching a tutorial on this, that maybe you don't have a heat press already. All right. Now it's upside down for you guys. <laughs> All right, I will get that little string out and show you guys the finished product. Yeah, so sometimes I have to go through and really scratch these little things out, but none of them are actual vinyl. It's just little pieces of dust that get <laughs> ironed in, unfortunately. That looks so, so good though. I'm gonna show you guys a picture of this with the booties that they're going with. I assume it's a baby shower gift for a new baby because there are a lot of those that happen. Um, and there will also be a link to the booties and this gift set. It is once again www.etsy.com slash shop slash petite gems. You can get this and so much other cute stuff. And also on the petite gems.com, you can find the patterns and also more of our videos. So let's get these put together and see what they look like. All right, and there you go. This is the set. You can find it on the places that I told you about. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear them and maybe I can answer them, maybe I cannot, hopefully I can. I will put a list of all the supplies that are needed at the beginning of the video. Um, and if you have any questions about where to get them, also feel free to ask. As always, like and subscribe if you liked what you saw. Thank you so much.